Joan, thank you so, so much for sharing the stories. And um, it I really feel like it truly is a privilege for me to hear them and for others to hear them. And just to get this perspective of the respect for time, I feel it's so, so hard to communicate to people who haven't almost lost it just how incredibly valuable it is. And so then you know this and all of the work that you do in your organisation and in the community is infused with this energy. Every time I talk to you, Joan, I come away so energised from your perspective and and respect for for time and for life so thank you so so much for sharing that what would you say you have really taken away as the fundamental perspective if you had to sort of sum it up and then how is this shaping your business your processes your lifestyle freedom how how do you use what's happened to you to live your life if you like yes Oh, goodness. Um, there, are, there are a lot of wonderful lessons. So first of all, as I said, you know, every single day, uh, we can wake up and, and be out there is truly a gift. And you know, the, the thing is, that's really odd to me when people say and complain, I have to go to work. Oh, it's Monday. I've got to go to work. And I'm like, yay, I get to go to work. Yay. <laughs> it's Monday. Let's go. <laughs> so it's um, one thing, like I said, I it, it's great. Um, it, it influences every aspect of my days. So one way, and I'll list some specifics, is to really make the most of every day in terms of what am I doing within the time I am allotted. And, you know, there are days where, and it doesn't mean that we have to constantly be busy. That isn't necessarily good use of our time. That's not the idea is to be busy, busy, busy every minute of the day. I value quiet time. I now value just sitting on the outside, looking at my dog and looking at the palm trees and, you know, having my cup of coffee or a glass of wine, I don't have to do a thing. And I'll sit there and I don't need anybody around me. So that's the other thing. You know, I love people, of course, more than anything in the world. I love to be with people. But I have learned that having that quiet time within myself is actually what helps me leverage time even better. You know, when I've had that quiet time or in the morning, when I have that quiet time and I could kind of think and my mind's just free, you know, not like as you get into your day and you get bogged down with everything that's going on is when I actually have my greatest insights. And I know that's hard if for someone who lives at home and has kids and has a husband, you know, that's a little harder because you're pulled in a hundred directions. But I will also say at a young age, when I was a young mother, a working mother and wife, I did make time for myself every week. It was a rule. So uh, again, that's another area where I feel people feel like, oh, I can't, I can't do that, but you have to do it. Because if you wanna, you have gotta get recharged, you know? <laughs> and so my greatest investment is investing in me, in my time, my wellness, getting my massages, having fun with my friends, you know, whatever I do, I view that, so this is another lesson, as an investment that pays big dividends when I take that time. Um, it's some of the other things, you know, it influences, I, I like that you talk about the word influence, I really thought about that. And it influences, what I do with my time influences my five pillars. So the year after Dave died, I wrote a book for women called Give Yourself Permission to Live a Big Life. And in that book, that's where I identified my five pillars, career, family, financial, spiritual, and wellness. And the idea is to make sure I give equal attention to my five pillars over a year. So this is another thing with time. I don't believe and I don't use the word balance. Everybody talks about balance your personal and your work life. 
My pillars are never in balance. Maybe once on one weekend, I gave attention to all five, but it's not realistic and it's not sustainable. So take the pressure off yourself um, because that's been one of my greatest lessons. So it's just over a year's time, you know, did I give enough attention to my spiritual? If not, you need to make time for that. Um, your wellness to me is number, number one, making time for my wellness because it impacts all my others. You know, if I take care of that wellness pillar, then I, I can be on fire at work. Uh, and I know we, you and I talked about time management, right? We all talk about time management, but now the focus is, and I know you fully believe in this, Abigail, because we talked about it, it's energy management. It isn't, you know, it, it's, yes, if you manage, if I manage my mental energy and my physical energy, I will be able to put more into the hours I have. 